In the previous video for this letting agency database, we created the validation. We're now moving on to look at the activity regarding the queries. There's always two queries. The first one is pretty straightforward. The second one can be a little bit tricky, often involves some calculations and use of functions. Let's just have a look at query A to start with. Here we need to create a query to display an alphabetically sorted list of the current rentals for properties that have at least three bedrooms. It must show the sorted property postcode and monthly rental only. So the important thing here is sorted current rentals. So that means probably the rental end date is null and the number of bedrooms are going to be three and above. And we're only going to show sorted on the postcode and we're going to show the monthly rental only. In Access, we're going to go on to Create and we're going to use Query Design. The first thing is to get the tables into the query. We know we need the property postcode and that's in TBL property. We need the monthly rent, which is in TBL rental. We need the number of bedrooms, we've got that in TBL property. And we need the rental end date and that's in TBL rental. We'll put the fields into the query next. We need the property postcode and we need that sorting. So in the sort row, select ascending. We need the monthly rent. We need the number of bedrooms and we need the rental end date. And we need the properties where they've got three or more bedrooms. So we can do greater than two and that will give us three, four and five. We also need those where there's no rental end date. So if we say is null, that will give us the properties with no rental end date. So here we've got the results of that. We've got our postcode, which is in sorted order. We've got the monthly rental. The number of bedrooms for these is three and five, so that's three and above. And we've got a blank rental end date. I just need to go back to design now and untick the number of bedrooms and untick the rental end date because it just said show the postcode and the monthly rent. And there we have our query completed. Make sure you save it, use the prefix QRY and then give it an appropriate name. So that's query A completed. Let's take a look at query B. So for query B, we need to create a query for rentals that have ended. So that rental end date is where they've got a date in it. To calculate the duration of the rentals in years for, year, for rentals that have ended, the income generated. And we need to display the property postcode the length of rental in full years and the income generated. So again, on to create and we'll use query design. And the first thing is to get the tables into the query. We need the property postcode, that's in TBL property. We also need the rental start date and rental end date, that will be in TBL rental. And we need the monthly rent. And if we just drag this down a bit, we've got the monthly rent there in TBL rental. Let's put the fields in now. We need the property postcode. We need the rental start date. We need the rental end date and we need the monthly rent. Now, with regard to this rental end date, we want it's not null in the criteria because we want all those that have got a rental end date. The next thing we need to do is work out the rental length in years and we're going into this next column. I'm going to do a right mouse click and build. The first thing we'll do is find out the difference in months between the rental start date and the rental end date. So rental length colon. We're going to use date diff, open bracket. First part of the date diff is to tell it which part of the date we want to find the difference. And we do months, then a comma. And then we want rental start date. 
and then a comma and then rental end date and close the bracket. Now that will give us the number of months between the rental start date and the rental end date. If we divide that by 12, that will give us the number of years. If we just have a look at the result of this Oops, so far, I see we've got the rental length. It's not an integer. We've got a number of decimal places there. So I'm going to make this into an integer to give us a whole number of years. So going back into build and all I'm going to do is put integer, open bracket and then close the bracket at the end. So I've just built up that calculation, finding the difference in months first between the rental start, the rental end, dividing that by 12, which will give us the number of years. And then I found the integer of that calculation and click on OK. Remember, this is an expression and we'll need the total row and select expression. Okay, looking at the results, that's better. We've now got our rental length in years as an integer number. The next thing we need to do is work out the income. Remember that monthly rent is monthly and there's 12 months in the year. So in this next column, right mouse click and build. And we'll call this total income, colon. And the total income is the monthly rent times by... 12 times by the rental length. And again, this is an expression, so you'll need to select expression. Let's have a look at the result. So here we've got our total income. Uh, we perhaps could do with formatting that to currency, seeing as it's money. And then the other thing is just to show the property postcode, the rental length and the total income. I've highlighted the total income. I'm going to go to the property sheet and I'm going to select format and currency. That's dealt with that. And then we just need to show the property postcode, the rental length and the total income. So there we have property postcodes, rental length and total income. And that completes the queries. In the next video, We'll look at the report.